the most gut-wrenching loss of the season in more ways than one as the Stars fall to the Avalanche in OT by the final score of 5-4. to four. But the big question that looms, what are the Stars going to do without Miro Haskinen? Let's talk about it next on Locked on Stars. Your Locked on Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans, and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Stars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Joey Erickson, former producer, 105 Through the Fan, and play-by-play voice of the Chippewa Steel. Be sure to subscribe. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen. Well, that one really stung as the Avalanche completed a comeback as the Stars surrender a two-goal lead in the third period once again to the Avalanche. Nathan McKinnon wins it in overtime. But the big question that looms, Miro Haskinen's injury. What are the Dallas Stars going to do without number four, their best overall defenseman? Really, really tough blow to the Stars. So much we have to get into today about this game, about Miro and what that's going to look like moving forward. We'll end it on a positive note with Jake Ottinger, who is going to be the all-star representative, but it's hard to even think about that right now with what happened last night. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app. And use promo code locked on NHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. So Miro Haskinen collided with Scott Wedgwood early in the third period at the 1841 mark. He went off the bench. He went with the Stars head athletic trainer down the tunnel, and we never saw him again, unfortunately. It looks like it's a knee injury. He was questionable to return with a lower body injury. He kind of got folded under Scott Wedgwood. It was not a very pretty collision. I did get some uh, better feelings about it when the Stars uh, eventually reported it was going to be questionable to return. Maybe they avoided worst-case scenario. Pete DeBoer uh, did mention after the game, Saad Youssef reported this, Pete DeBoer didn't have an update on Miro Haskinen. We'll have some testing done, probably have more for you tomorrow. So we will, of course, hear uh, more probably tomorrow morning uh, about Haskinen, but it's a, a huge blow to the Dallas Stars. They're a completely different looking team without him. It's no surprise that he's been carrying the load on the back end for the Stars this season. He was playing just so well at an elite level last night. He plays so great against the best competition too, which is always the mark of a world-class player. And uh, he turns it up and elevates his play when it matters. And he was having an excellent game yesterday, had an assist on the power play goal. Um, and, and of course, that stung. And the Stars played well even after he went down for the first seven minutes or so. Again, they open up a 4-2 to two lead and they can't close it out. It's so infuriating. You have to close out these teams when you're up two with the final 10 minutes of a period. And Colorado, credit to them, they punch back quickly a few times in the game, but my oh my, you have to be able to close out games. And Miro's injury hurts. It's a close game. That's usually the time that Miro's playing the final five minutes, pretty much. He rotates out there with different partners throughout. The silver lining in this is that Thomas Harley's going to play a ton and he's going to have an elevated role. He ended up playing 24 minutes last night, of course, in uh, in kind of relief. Essel and Dell played 26 minutes. Hockenpah was up at 21. Part of that was a lot of the penalty killing, and Lindell and Hockenpah chew up a lot of those minutes, but we saw a lot of Harley. The good news is Harley can play with anybody, and frankly, I think he can handle those minutes, but look, it, it already hurts to have... Miro gone. I, I mean, you're going to have to find answers now from others. And the Stars haven't got a lot of answers from others throughout the season. And I don't know if that's going to change here in the near, near future. Look, um, maybe they avoided worst case scenario, but I mean, you're looking at a stretch here without the best player on your team. And at a very, very crucial position. Of course, he quarterbacks your power play. Harley can step in. Lundquist is going to have to play now. 
So it's kind of put up or shut up for number five, who's been healthy scratched more often than not here in the last month. But Miro's injury really, really hurts, really hurts. And uh, I could continue to say that so many times because he is so, so important and an integral part of the team. I, I mean, <laughs> he, he just does everything and it, it, it's, it's going to be noticeable. The stars have been able to weather the storm with Scott Wedgwood, who played really good last night. He was sharp. He was a bit scrambly late, unfortunately, but I mean, he was spectacular in the game too. held off some really, really strong surges from Colorado, especially on a few of their own power plays and uh, he made it tough for them. It's uh, a damn shame the Stars couldn't pick up uh, a full two points. They do pick up one, but it, it, it really stings. You needed to. Um, and, and they played really, really well. And that's the hard thing to kind of swallow in the result because I thought they played a really phenomenal hockey game. Unfortunately, the last 10 minutes were not very good. <laughs> um, and of course, it, that's those are the type of situations that really hurt when you do not have Miro Haskinen. Unfortunately, the Stars have done this multiple times, even with him in the lineup. So this is an overarching issue, uh, to be honest. But look, um, it, it certainly doesn't help that you have a shutdown defenseman <laughs> in close hockey games because Miro plays the majority of those minutes. Now they're going to have to go to somebody else. Uh, you, you can't lean back on him, which uh, which certainly uh, is a tough spot. But as, as I was saying, it was a, a really, really great hockey game. I thought both teams were competing. The effort level, the physicality, it was crisp hockey, such a pep uh, in in the contest, Sagan continues to play such high level two way hockey. He picks up two goals, man. I thought his second was going to be the dagger. I really did. Um, a beautiful little toe drag around Georgiev. Marchman is having a wonderful week and a half. Another two point night, three straight multi point nights for Marchman. A couple assists for him. Pavelski on the power play. Duchesne was very active. The Wyatt Johnston line was firing on all cylinders in the first two periods, especially they were out and hungry. Um, and uh, that, that's all fine and dandy, right? Like that's the positives I can take out of the game is that they, they play a Stanley cup favorite really tight and should have won. They should have beat them twice now in the season series, but they've surrendered multi-goal leads twice to Colorado. And it's a, a tale of, two different circumstances sometimes where they're good when they're playing from behind and they're not playing very well with a lead either, which uh, is very, very frustrating. Um, and, and this one just stung. It, it really did. And the loss to Miro, uh, of course, kind of uh, exaggerates that a bit. Uh, Saad Yusuf did report that it looked like Miro tried to come out of the tunnel back on the bench to get back into the game. And then he went back down the tunnel. If that gives you um, any warm feelings about the situation or makes you feel a bit better about it, that is something to take out of it. Maybe it was more of a precautionary thing because it really was a tough collision. He kind of got folded and his knee was bent other un under Wedgwood as he kind of lost an edge tracking back. Um, on a avalanche breakaway. So, um, yeah, but uh, that's that's where we stand right now. We'll have testing done, probably have more for you tomorrow, is the quote from Pete DeBoer about Miro Haskin in postgame and a 5-4 loss to the avalanche in overtime. But it, again, it those losses just can't happen. I don't care if you lose Miro. You have to shut down a 4-2 game with less than 10 minutes to go. Infuriating. You have to continue to play your hockey game. You can't get on your heels. You can't get complacent. Colorado's so good. You're going to see a ton of McKinnon. They're so top-heavy. 
You knew what was going to happen. It was going to be McCarr, McKinnon, Rantanen, Druin for the final eight minutes of the game practically. And you, you still just can't nut up to some degree uh, and get the job done. You shouldn't have to have Miro to close out a game like that. You, you really shouldn't. Um, and uh, that's really frustrating. And look, it's some of its recency bias, I'm sure. I'll feel a bit better when I wake up but <laughs> uh, the next day. But it, 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 it's still a really, really tough dilemma that, that the Stars have to deal with now. You could be without Miro for 10 games. I don't know how the, the Stars are going to fare without him. That's a, a big, big piece who's your number one defenseman on the, the power play. And look, I know the power play isn't lighting the world on fire, but he does a lot more than you think. I think a lot of people are going to realize that. And and to be to be completely honest, I, I, I understand many people already know how much he does, but I think it's going to be very noticeable now uh, how much Miro is kind of the glue uh, that holds things together. But look, we're going to see what the stars are made of here. <laughs> um, and maybe that's a, a, a good sign. I felt like that was something that we were going to see with Otter out. And they've looked pretty good since Ottinger went down. So let's see how they fare uh, without Mira Haskin. In. I, I think we're going to get a, a lot of answers. And the stars need help. And they may, may need it quicker uh, than we really thought. All righty. Where do we go from here? Where do the stars go from here? We'll try to answer that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by FanDuel. If the NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Not is the NFL season wrapping up. It is wrapping up. The Cowboys have a chance to win the division on Sunday. Can you believe it? And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet. You got live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parley Hub. You have a whole Sunday slate of NFL games here this weekend. Prop up on the couch. Do some bets. Win some money while you're watching football and hopefully watching the Dallas Cowboys win the NFC East and lock up the number two seat in the NFC. The playoffs are right around the corner, so visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Be sure to check out uh, Locked On Sports Today, the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel. Locked On Sports Today is here for you covering the top stories of the day with local experts on Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Be sure to check them out. Head over there and subscribe. Be sure to subscribe to Locked On Stars. Never miss an episode. Appreciate all you everydayers out there. Let me know your comments your observations and opinions here about the stars moving forward without the possibility of Miro Haskin in here. And uh, that's uh, the big headline coming out of last night. And it really stung. It really did. Because if Dallas wins, there's just a, a whole different vibe, I feel like. Of course, the Miro injury is going to put a damper on things. But if you pick up two points uh, against a team like Colorado... You're going to be just fine moving forward. Look, I, I'm not overly concerned uh, about the stars here come playoff time or anything like that for a long stretch um, because I, I wholeheartedly don't think it's going to be a long-term injury. But this is me completely speculating. And of course, we're going to know more. So um, I, I'm not going to try to speculate too much. But look, you have a stretch here against some very winnable teams. And I've talked about this at nauseum here throughout the week, but it's so true. The Stars need to pick up points in these next five games. Minnesota twice, Nashville and Chicago. Frankly, you need to win all four. You need all of those eight points. You got one last night. It was nice. Should have had two. You need eight points here in, in the next four games. And that's uh, it, it's tough to ask. 
you may get Jake Ottinger here back in the next week, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal sign. He was moved to day-to-day here a few days ago. Uh, He was on a week-to-week basis. He's skating now every day. He's practicing. He's taking shots in in practice, which, uh, of course, shows he's progressing and almost there, which uh, is great news. It's, It's great news at this point in the season and with, of course, the injury to Miro here. Ottinger comes back. At least you have your number one netminder. That will soften the blow to some degree. Wedgwood just played in 10 straight games. He pretty much played the majority of the game. He didn't even start against Ottawa because Otter Otter came out in that one. Wedgwood is going to need to rest at some point. You have a game on Saturday against Nashville, then a home and home with Minnesota on Monday, Wednesday, and then a Friday, Saturday back-to-back with Nashville and Bedard and the Blackhawks. So there's a a lot of games and a lot of points to be had. Wedgwood is going to need a rest. He just started nine straight games. They don't trust Matt Murray, obviously. (laughs) They didn't want to play him against the Blackhawks or Montreal. So I I don't know if if that tells you anything about where the goaltending situation is. Fortunately, Otter may be back here in the next week or so. Um, And it, it probably could not come at a better time. They need him. They need a hero from somewhere. <laughs> uh, and, and maybe Otter is going to be uh, that uh, saving grace for the stars. But, wow. Joel Hanley's going to have a big role in this. Niels Lundqvist is going to have to play here probably quite a bit. And this, of course, is all coming from the perspective that Miro's going to be out here for who knows how long. An extended period of time, I say. So it's kind of all hands on deck. I'm thinking worst case scenario in my eyes that you're going to have some guys with some expanded roles here. Look, you're going to see what Dallas is made of. How are they going to be able to defend at a high level without their number one defenseman? How's their power play going to look? And really just how's their overall game going to look? Miro shuts down a ton of plays. (laughs) He neutralizes the best opponent or the best player on the opponent almost every single night. And uh, you're not going to have that to some degree. Harley's looked so good. He looked phenomenal last night too. He made some excellent plays in overtime and just made some excellent plays in the third period as well. I'm excited for that, that uh, 55 is going to have himself free reign to really prove that uh, he's ready, he's ready to to take on that big role, um, and, and I think that's a a, a real uh, silver lining in the uh, Miro injury. Uh, unfortunately, I, I I really do because uh, I'm so high on Harley, as you know, coming into the season, I thought he was going to be a 50 point type player. He's already got nine goals on the season. He's been so effective. Um, yeah, he's going to get a, a, a great opportunity. He has pretty much been the, the new Miro, so to speak. Anyways, he played like eight shifts in the first period and had seven different partners. <laughs> he can play with anybody, which is good news. Pete DeBoer is going to have his work cut out for him. Yeah, the stars need help though. The, the stars need help. And of course we've been discussing the need of another right shot defenseman in the trade market. Maybe this forces Jim Neal's hand to some degree, and he has to go out and make a signing earlier than he would have wanted. And maybe that's okay. They need it anyways. And if Miro's going to be out for an extended period of time, you maybe need somebody to just kind of settle and stable the foundation, so to speak, because um, it, it could get ugly. It, it, it really could. <laughs> and this is a, a Stars decor that hasn't been very superb, you could say. It hasn't been locked down by any means, even with number four in the lineup on a night-in and night-out basis. So, look, it could really slide the other direction. Of course, I hope not. Otter coming back. Maybe this wakes them up. The Stars have been really good at handling adversity. I'm not really worried about the mentality and mindset 
because they have so many veteran pieces. They have great leadership. They're going to be fine mentally, and they're still going to be able to win games. But at some point, personnel, I feel like, is going to shine through, especially against teams like Colorado and Vegas and L.A. and Vancouver. You just need those guys in your lineup to shut opponents down. Um, and, and they're not going to have it. Uh, they're not going to have it. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. It's going to be uh, an interesting, interesting few weeks. Hopefully we get good news on Miro Haskinen at some point. Hopefully we get that. Miro Haskinen out with a lower body injury last night after colliding with Scott Wedgwood. The big, big question that looms in a really, really, really gut-wrenching loss to the Colorado Avalanche. That one sucked. It sucked. I hated it. <laughs> uh, makes my blood boil losing games like that. Another two-goal lead surrendered. Stars have Nashville on Saturday. Couple of games against Minnesota, Nashville again, and Chicago. Very winnable games. The next seven days is going to be very, very important in terms of the Central Division race. Of course, DeBoer has made it very clear that he wants to win the division, the highest seed possible, and get home ice advantage. Here you go. Here you go. You're about to hit the halfway mark. Can you win games when you really need it most and stay in the fight? Got to stay in the fight here in the next seven days. Okay, to end on a positive note, a lighter note, instead of all the bitterness that I've been verbalizing into a microphone, Jake Ottinger is your Dallas Stars all-star representative. If things couldn't get any weirder, I'll tell you a bit more about that in just a moment. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Sleeper. It's almost the halfway point in the season, Stars fans. And, well, we've had a lot of highs and probably the lowest of low here <laughs> with a 5-4 loss to the Colorado Avalanche. Wherever and regardless of where the Stars are in the current standings, I want to remind you, you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey with because you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contest. All you have to do is pick studs like, I don't even want to say his name, but McKinnon, who had a three-point night and the NHL leading scorer, the Kucherovs of the world. You can record more or less on their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, or more in a given game to win 100 times bet on sleeper. You need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me right, Stars fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey on sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks, and you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and with location availability. So it came out just before the Stars drop the puck last night that Jake Ottinger is going to be the Dallas Stars All-Star representative this season in Toronto. Of course, Jake Ottinger making his first All-Star appearance. I thought he was snubbed last year, so maybe this is a makeup. Uh, and of course, it was a very weird choice. Look. In the big picture, the Stars didn't have a, a ton of standouts, to be completely honest, because they've really been very balanced offensively. Robertson's had a good year, but hasn't had quite the goal-scoring mark. You could argue Pav. I thought Matt Duchesne would have been a great choice with the impact he's had. He also has that Ontario connection. They didn't have a clear-cut winner, so to speak. But I have to be honest, Jake Ottinger was really weird <laughs> since he's been almost out for a month now. Look, I don't really care, so to speak. Um, I used to hold the All-Star game in a lot higher regard. I understand now it doesn't really matter who's the best player at some points. <laughs> um, and I get that. It's all about marketing and getting high players in, which which I completely understand. The All-Star Games for the fans at the end of the day, 
I thought it was a bit weird, but I'm happy for him. <laughs> I'm certainly happy for Jake Ottinger. Not going to be mad that they put him in the All-Star game. Look, you can make the case that there was a few more deserving players. Would love to hear your thoughts on that situation too, if you thought they should have gone with somebody else. But uh, Jake Ottinger is honored with the uh, all-star representative for the Dallas Stars. Be sure to vote as well. You can vote for Miro. Obviously, he's hurt, but uh, you got Matt Duchesne, Jason Robertson, and Rope Hintz. Uh, you can vote uh, a few of those guys into the all-star game as well. But right now, Jake Ottinger is going to be your all-star representative here in 2024. All righty, that's kind of my positive note, and he may be back here soon <laughs> at uh, the perfect time, which uh, the Stars desperately need. Stars need Otter back healthy. They need Miro healthy. They need to start closing out games. I can't watch another two-goal lead evaporated late in a hockey game because it's not only happening against Colorado. It's been happening against Montreal. God, I am so irritated. I want to scream, but uh, I will not do that. I will contain myself and have some level of maturity here on today's podcast. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for all the love and support here on Locked On Stars. Follow me on Twitter, JoyTheJet19. Make sure to hit that notification bell. Never miss an episode of Locked On Stars. Let it out in the comic section. Let it out. Your grievances, your concerns. How much of a concern is it for you if Miro Haskin is out here in the near future? How do you feel about the stars now in the next few months? Please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, Look, I'm not completely hitting the panic button either. A lot of this is just recency bias. And it's really, really close to the result that just happened. So it stings a bit more. We're going to need a few days to sleep on this. We have a weekend, hopefully a win against Nashville. And maybe we'll feel a lot better about the Dallas Stars heading into next Monday. Okay, that's going to wrap it up. I've been way too bitter and uh, not as happy today, I feel like, on the podcast, which uh, is, is not my cup of tea and not how I like to conduct myself, but I felt like I needed to encapsulate the feeling of all of us today. So I'm being emotional, I'm being emotional. Okay. That's going to do it. Enough of me rambling. Always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you guys so much. As always, be sure to like comment, subscribe, follow me on the Twitter thing. Have a wonderful Friday starts back in action tomorrow and Saturday. I'll have a fun episode coming on Monday. I'm doing a crossover with Locked on Wild. Seth over at Locked on Wild. We're going to do a little crossover because, of course, we got a home and home there on Monday and Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that episode. Should be a lot of fun. And I'll be in the building in the Excel Energy Center on Monday. Hopefully the stars can beat down on the wild again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And... We'll see you on Monday. So long, Stars fans.